Yeah, Jim, just take a look at these monitoring sites all over the world just after noon today. Look at how powerful it was in New Mexico. This is a reading from New Hampshire. And look at how powerful this was. This is a reading in Japan. Now, what they're still monitoring right now is the fact that there have not been any major aftershocks. As soon as we detect an earthquake, um, we start to locate exactly where it occurred and try to constrain its size or its magnitude. Wooliak showed us what scientists immediately start studying. So the largest shaking is observed near that epicenter. As you get further and further out, the shaking decreases. The impact is similar to a quake exactly 32 years ago. Same the shaking was larger in Mexico City. Because the soft sediments underneath large parts of the city. A lot of the reason why people think that 1985 earthquake was so damaging was because uh, the shaking was amplified within Mexico City. Another similarity with today's quake and an 8.1 deadly quake earlier this year is the cause. Both of them actually occurred as normal earthquakes where the plates are actually bending. Um, so this earthquake appeared to have occurred within the subducting plate uh, where it's actually bending and pulling apart. But the two are not believed to be related. This falls outside the region that we typically consider uh, aftershock of the magnitude 8.1 earthquake. Now, there are about 14 earthquakes a year that are magnitude 7.0 or above. But again, the big thing that they're still monitoring here is the fact that there have been no major aftershocks. In Golden, Jeff Todd covering Colorado first. Interesting. All right, Jeff, thank you.